Hey guys, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I wanted to take a few minutes to give you guys an update on what's going on here with the build for the Pocket Go S30. First thing should be very obvious here, the battery is a different color. Uh, it's instead of gray like it was on the minimal image, it's purple here. It's purple in one of the themes as well, I just swapped them out for the purpose of making it more easily seeable. Also when it's charging, this is the green light there. Alright, so obviously you click this and it'll just turn the power off. There's not really much to that. Turn back on. This is new. Check this out. This is RetroArch 190. It's something I've been working on back and forth um, for the last few days with somebody whose name I can't pronounce. It's B... Let me read it. It's B K A C J I O S. Is the person that was helping or working on this? So while we're in here, there's two things that don't launch from the main screen. You need to use this to launch at the moment. One of them is this scum. You just click on the core and then click start core and that's it then it'll start the core also we're still working on integrating the joypad or this here so it's not working currently inside of RetroArch it still works for PSX and it's working with a couple of the ports and it works in the main menu and it works on the N64 we're working on it's just not working in the RetroArch currently it will be though also, the D-pad works just as well for 90% of the games anyways. Also, you can see the volume meter there. When you press this button now, you get a RetroArch menu. You have access to the full quick menu, which includes the per emulator options menu, as well as the full normal menu, so you have the settings menu. You can mess with the controller configuration. L2, R2 are now working. That's also thanks to the person who I mentioned before. He's the one who got that fixed. I believe in giving credit where it is due. So we're going to quickly go through this. This We're going to go through it forwards, though, because that's backwards. <coughs> I managed to keep the settings menu with all these changes. Not that there's much in there, but, you know, brightness control is nice. I believe you can also do that through RetroArch as well, though, now. Oh, yeah. Let's give you guys a quick view of what's in here now. And when I get to something juicy like N64, I will stop and I'll show you. There's two different cores. One is provided by the company that made this. They're working on it. And it does work, but as you're about, literally about to see, it's, uh, they have it overclocked or like frame skipped, and it's too fast. I asked them to slow it down, and they're working on it. You just hear the audio, see it's way too fast, like ridiculously too fast. Fast enough that it's making everything crackle as well, so that's never good. But the important thing is that it does work, and since the introduction of RetroArch, I've been able, or the menu, I should say, I've been able to configure the joystick. <laughs> the problem is that this is the RetroArch menu that the factory is working on. It's uh, version 179 RetroArch, but also it's it's sideways. However, you can use it to configure the joystick, and it does work fine. It's just that it's sideways, so you know we prefer using the normal proper looking menu and just fixing the joystick there. So as you can hear, it's greatly sped up. But functional. Functional is the important bit, I think. You get the point, I think. No need to... So then you just go... Close content and it'll access. 
the grand total is 80 systems and ports that you can see right here on the screen. And then there's two, as I said, that only launch via the RetroArch GUI at the moment, which is ScumVM and uh, Reminiscence, which is Flashback. And the joystick works here as well. It also works in PSX. However, if you switch PSX to RetroArch, then you can use and load save states. It's kind of a pain in the butt that the joystick's not working properly, but it's it's not something that um, a whole reflash is required for. It's just more of a matter of getting RetroArch rebuilt with it working, and then it can just be drag and dropped in and replace the current RetroArch in the folder. Oh, this one's cool. I thought I'd show you guys this quickly. I actually just added this maybe 20, 30 minutes ago. Hour tops. So it's got this. This is a keyboard. You press select. and It's like a whole, literally a whole old looking keyboard, which I thought was awesome. You press start to start the game, otherwise it'll sit there and do nothing. That's an important tidbit of information, I think. I don't want to wait for it to load and whatever, but I'm just showing you guys quick. Dinothor also is uh, <clears throat> an exception to the rule because there is no real decent settings in there, and uh, there's nothing to do really with the RetroArch menu, so when you click it, it'll pop up but the content will just close. You're not missing anything because there's really nothing to change and the game works fine, so it's not really a big deal, I don't think. Going back to RetroArch, we're going to go Load Core. Reminiscence. This is the other one I told you guys about. We also now have access to the full file system properly. Uh, so, Mount and external SD is where you find all of your stuff on your SD card slot and for this one I'm gonna go to flashback now you'll see it doesn't show you the game files for some reason but that's not relevant because you can just click on the data folder and click any file and it'll still load the game anyway and there's the retro rich menu so yeah, that's the quick update. Everything's themed. Color has changed down here. Oh, actually, I wanted to show you guys one more thing before I let you go here. Uh, I, I told you I was working on a second N64 core. The joystick doesn't work, so I can't move. But um, like it works on the core. It just doesn't work using this retro arch. So while we're here, we can go as you can. So there's different options between parallel and Muppin or Mupin, however you want to pronounce it. And the performance can be a bit different too. It's better for different. Like the two different cores are better for different games, I would say, to some degree. But more importantly, we have options. So. I don't suspect that we'll ever be able to play the full N64 library on here, much like we won't be able to play the full 64, or sorry, the full, Dream, full Dreamcast library on here either. However, I mean, even if we only get 20 or 30 decent titles that run, it's still infinitely better than where we were, so I'm good with that. It's an improvement. As always, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.